Hello, ladies, and welcome to Real Life Conversations. I'm so excited that you stopped by. Listen, if you don't know who I am or what we do around here, this is Real Life Women's Ministries. We have conversations with different women all over the world talking about various topics pertaining to women. Tonight, we're kicking off a great series. It's for all of us pastors' wives, leaders' wives. You know, it's, it is a, it's a ministry in and of itself, right? So I have some very great guests that are going to come on through the month of September, and we're just going to chat it up and answer some of your questions. But you know what I always say, right? I have another amazing guest for you tonight. I'm so excited. It is Sister Tori Cofield from the Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church here in Houston. She's going to be joining us tonight. Now, listen, tonight we're going to be talking about some stuff. The topic is my husband is my pastor. Now, how does that work? <laughs> the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, we are going to be uplifting one another. You know, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. So we're just going to encourage one another along this journey. Now, look, I know that you know some pastor's wives. Go head on and hit them up right quick. Tell them to go on over to YouTube and join us tonight for the conversation. And ladies, it's a conversation for real. We want you to drop in the comments your questions, your thoughts, your amens, and your hallelujahs. Give us thumbs ups and likes and all that stuff. And hey, subscribe to the channel. We want to reach many, many women with the encouragement that we're going to provide through this series. So please consider subscribing. Now, let's get right to it. Let us prepare our minds and our hearts for our conversation tonight. So let, let's start with the word. So I'm gonna take us into Proverbs chapter 18. Now I know you may be driving or blow drying your hair or whatever. So you may not be able to get to your Bible. I will read it, just crank up the sound. Let's go into God's word, all right? This is just our meditation moment to prepare our hearts for this conversation. Proverbs 18, and here's what it says. He who separates himself seeks his own desire. He quarrels against all sound wisdom. A fool does not delight in understanding, but only in revealing his own mind. When a wicked man comes, contempt also comes, and with dishonor comes scorn. Verse four, the words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. To show partiality to the wicked is not good, nor to thrust aside the righteous in judgment. A fool's lips bring strife, and his mouth calls for blows. A fool's mouth is his ruin, and his lips are the snare of his soul. Verse 8, the words of a whisperer are like dainty morsels, and they go down into the innermost parts of the body. He who is slack in his work is brother to him who destroys. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Now listen, somebody ought to shout. If you're with us already, come on in the comments and say amen. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is safe. A rich man's wealth is his strong city and like a high wall in his own imagination. Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, but humility goes before honor. Verse 13, he who gives an answer before he hears, it is folly and shame to him. The spirit of a man can endure his sickness, but as for a broken spirit, who can bear it? Verse 15, the mind of the prudent acquires knowledge and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. The first to plead his case seems right. Right, ladies? Come on now. We're going to talk about that tonight. The first to plead his case seems right until another comes and examines it. The cast lot puts an end to strife and decides between the mighty ones. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And contentions are like the bars of a citadel. With the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach will be satisfied. He will be satisfied with the product of his lips. Verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife, come on somebody. He who finds a wife, I'm going to say it from memory, findeth a good thing. Now that's from the King James Version, but I'm reading NASB. 
He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Verse 23, the poor man utters supplications, but the rich man answers roughly. And the last verse, a man of too many friends comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Amen and amen. Ladies, tonight we're going to talk about my husband is my pastor. How does that work? The good, the bad, and the ugly. Because maybe you don't know the life of your pastor. Maybe you don't know the journey, the ups, the downs, the ins and outs. Maybe you don't know how to encourage her. But this I know. I've been doing biblical counseling for many years. And there are a lot of pastor's wives who are suffering. And who are they going to tell? without their information being shared on social media, without all their business being spread abroad. Tonight, we wanna encourage you, my sister. If you're a pastor's wife, I hope you dial in tonight and find encouragement as we talk about my husband is my pastor. Now, how does that work? Now, listen, let me bring in my guest for tonight. I'm so excited. Sister Cofield, come on in the room, girl. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, and welcome to Real Life Conversations. I'm so excited about our conversation for tonight. Now, you and I have talked, and, and I can say that I know you a little, but there may be some people who don't know you at all. Would you mind introducing yourself to them? Of course. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Tori Cofield. Um, I am the First Lady of the Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church right here in Houston, Texas, um, where my husband, Dr. D.Z. Cofield, is the senior pastor. Um, I am a uh, lifetime educator here in the city of Houston. Well, I've actually worked across the country in, in various cities, uh, building schools and helping people build schools and uh, helping uh, school districts to keep schools out of trouble. Um, mm -hmm. and currently, right now, I am actually working with a couple of schools here in Houston and um, working on a project here at the church where we are starting our own diversion program for children who young people rather who have been in trouble with the law wow. and we're trying to make sure that they don't they no longer get in trouble with the law and we're, we're providing a wraparound program for them uh to help them you know start a better life just just wow better so we're excited about that that starts in a few weeks so we're excited about that that's some good good work well i am excited to have you here we want to talk about my ha my husband is my pastor. I always say, this is my pastor husband or my husband pastor or one or the other. Uh, I, he's been my husband pastor for almost 24 years now. Wow. So, <laughs> there'd been some good, some bad and some ugly all the way through that. But yeah. there is a lot of good. One of the things that I think I said like about five years into our marriage was, I wish that it would have come with a handbook. Mm -hmm. I wish that there had been someone that would have said, hey, watch out for this good because you need to appreciate it because there will be some bad. There will be some ugly. But here's how you give God glory through it. Right. And tonight, that's kind of what I want to do. So let's start with the good. Mm -hmm. You've been married to your husband. I always say the right Reverend Dr. D.Z. Cofield. <laughs> the Reverend Dr. D.Z. Cofield. The Reverend Dr. <laughs> I, you know, it depends on what, what had what, in our house we call we had each other. So when we're talking to each other, we 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 preface the conversation by saying which hat we're wearing. So okay. Say, I'm wearing my first lady hat. And typically that's something that has to do with the church. Okay. Um, my wife hat is something personal, or my corporate hat, which is my executive hat, which is what working. And so he's like, I say, like, so put your executive hat on because we need to have this conversation. Yeah. So it, it depends. I have lots of names for him. So yes. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Cofield, Reverend Cofield, or you know. DZ. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can call him DZ. I'm going to call him the right reverend. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> well, you know, that's an important point, too. We, we might want to swing back around to that, to understanding, because sometimes we as wives can work closely in ministry with our pastor husbands, and then sometimes we don't. Right. So, ladies, let me say this tonight. Also, what we're talking about um, may apply to you, may not apply to you, except for the Bible part is always going to apply to you. But I do think that there is context. There are denominational differences. There are cultural differences. There are many different differences that exist in, you know, this kind of role as a pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. So take what you can from this and the rest, just let it fall by the wayside. Yeah. Let's talk about the good. What has been so great about being a pastor's wife? Uh, I think just exposure 
to uh, opportunities that I may not have had, you know, exposure to prior to this this uh, situation with the district attorney's office uh, is, you know, a dream come true to be able to work with these uh, at risk. I don't even like using that word, but that's the technical word. That's the, yeah. the word, the po politically correct word. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and she's amazing. The district attorney, like Kim Og, is just amazing. And we we clicked and so uh, working closely with Sheila Jackson Lee and okay. uh, trying to get some of the work that I've always wanted to do done um, with children and particularly in the third ward community. Uh, I don't think I would have would have had it wouldn't have been as easy. Yeah. Um, and also just. Um, Finding someone that I that loves me and that yeah. I love and I could be myself with. I didn't right. expect that to happen at this point in my life. I had planned on moving in with my son and his daughter. And oh, you had planned this. This was a plan. Oh, yeah. We were, <laughs> we were gonna buy a house together and it was gonna be the mother-in-law plan. And I was going to travel and take care of the grandkids. And, okay. And so, but this has been just a, a blessing just to have a relationship with a, a partner that actually a, allows me to be myself and encourages me. To, to 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 become better and to do better. Yeah. Um I, I didn't expect that. And so that has been amazing. It's just, it's been amazing. You know, I think it's very important that you say that because if we don't recognize that they are a man first, because sometimes people marry them for the pastor side. You know what I mean? Sometimes women are intentionally seeking out a pastor for status or whatever the case may be. Right. But to marry him for who he is and to take all of him mm -hmm. is the better deal, I think. Absolutely. I, I don't know why a woman would marry a pastor. <laughs> I just don't know why. The good, the bad, and the ugly. What I mean by that is why would a woman marry a pastor because he was a pastor? Oh, like, yeah. I don't know. Uh, and my husband is a, is a community pastor. He's a he's on the grounds, boots on the ground. You oh, know, yes. He is an assistant that we live a certain way. He wants to make sure that we're not above anybody. And, you know, right. we always keep ourselves connected to the people, um, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. But uh, I just I mean, it, you know, the stress of of just being a pastor's wife, especially in a church this size. Um, I just can't imagine anybody just really like wanting to sign up for that. <laughs> but, yeah. But, uh, you know, I don't know. But I'm not that girl for sure. <laughs> You know, and I remember asking him that when he when he asked me to marry him, I was like, "Are you sure?" Yeah, <laughs> you know, and he said, "Yes, yeah, so we're here." And it's yeah, been, it's been great. well. I think that some do it for prestige, for power, for recognition, for titles. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you know I, they call you Lady Cofield, and, and sometimes in our church they'll call me Lady Ellen or whatever. You know, those titles can get you in trouble if that's what you're seeking for. If you did not except the the mission and vision that God had given him and you weren't willing to go on that ride right. that title going to get you in trouble right i have a, I, I have a lot of friends in this church that people who have women who have nurtured me and built me up as a woman well yeah. long before we were even thinking about each other um, right uh, friends that i grew up with in the community and I, you know they don't call me lady any they call me tori that's right and i'm insistent on that i you know i think a couple of them asked me out the gate what do you want me to call you and i'm like what do you mean you know what you always call me so um it is it varies but i i do i do uh accept the title i accept the responsibility that comes along with it um to a certain extent and you know i'm, I'm able to kind of create boundaries around yeah. you know who i am and uh and they've been very gracious. We have women in this church that have roles in this church that that, that were doing things long before I came. Right. Um, Deshonda is our women's uh, ministry leader. Amazing. Oh, I miss her. She's an amazing woman, and she's done a she's done a great work, you know, and for many years. Um, to assume that I'm the first lady and I'm like getting ready to take that is insane, you know. Uh, you know why I'm I'm looking forward to working with her was what because I thought people came to me. Are you taking over the women's ministry? I was like, is she sick? Is she yeah. Sick? You know, yeah. why would I do that? Um, the lead deacon's wife, Sister Tibbs, is just an amazing yeah. woman and does so it much. Is. We share a lot and they teach me so much. So it's been it's been a great run so far.
So let's just kind of put it in perspective so some of these ladies can know you came into this um, as an existing member of the church who married the pastor. That's a different walk for many women, but but there are similarities. Somebody else has that same story just as right. you. So let's stop there and encourage that segment of the population that there's this lady, she has married this pastor. She had no idea of, you know, and, and your church is significantly large. I mean, you all have a membership of how many? I think it's like 1,500. Uh, exactly. It may be more. I think it's more than that now since COVID. In fact, I don't yeah. think I know that it's more. Uh, I just don't have the exact number. My husband's going to kill me for that, but I don't have the exact number. But it has increased. Uh, yeah. And uh, worldwide. So, well, yeah. you, you know, let's let's talk to that lady that is mm -hmm. is probably coming into this in your season. Mm -hmm. She's coming in. She was a member of the church and she's going to marry the pastor. There are many things that may come along with that. Let's just hang around the good for right about now. Mm -hmm. But how would you encourage her to say, listen, whether you have 1500, 300 or 30 or three, right. here's some things you need to be aware of that that are going to be really good. But here's some check places for your heart you might want to stop and deal with. I just think that, you know, people, in the, there's trouble and there's good and bad everywhere. Uh, my husband always says this is church, not heaven. So it's right. not a place. Wait, uh, say it again. I think we all need to hear that. He we need to write that in the coming. Right, right. Woo! And so he, he says it all the time. And um, so there's, you know, there's always something going on. But for the most part, the church wanted to see him happy. Yeah. And, um, and you know, for the people who knew me well, were really embraced, you know, the union and, and you know, didn't even question it, you know, it just went on with it, you know. Um, and so that that's what sang to me, that that's what rang in my heart. That's what, that's what you know, help, help is, is dear to me, that uh, I've had people come up to me and say that he's better since we've gotten married, that his sermons are better since, that his preaching has gotten better since, mm -hmm. That, that he's just better all over all around since we've gotten married. And that, and I think that is, they don't have to do that. And I really right. appreciate it. And yeah. It really makes me feel good. So I feel like I'm sure there were some people who were not happy about it. And that's that's fine. But for the most part, I felt nothing but, you know, um, yeah. positive energy from everybody I meet and um, people that I didn't know, people that I didn't know. And I think they were like, like this, sitting around like this. Like, when are you going to get married, D.Z. Cofield? When you, you know, waiting for him to get... I, a couple of ladies said to me, I was trying to find him a wife. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So uh, <laughs> I think they were kind of uh, tired of him being single, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Well, I like that. Um, so the lady in your season, what I heard you say earlier, I think one of the things maybe she can take away from, from what you said is, Listen, I don't care how many degrees or certificates or whatever you have. Don't go up in there trying to run things because you just got on the scene. Oh, it was yeah. functioning before you got there. Yes. So, or, or even if you are a member there, know that um, sometimes titles and it really doesn't matter what the title is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people can take a title without really wanting the towel, meaning you don't want to do any work. You just right. want to be known as the miss it. You right. just want to be known as the one running everything, the come to, I'm the boss in charge. You might not want to go in there like that. It's about relationships. It really is. I, I think that it's really important that you know who you are and what it is that hmm. you know, what it is that you you want to do and what you bring to the table. I mean, I, like I said, I'm a lifetime educator. This is my 33rd year in work. I have my own ministry. That yeah. is my ministry. And um and I'm very proud of it and I'm very true to it, um, and I and, and in order to do any ministry well, you should be focused on that. Yeah. Ministry. So right now, my you know that's still my focus. My my main focus, of course, is my husband. Yeah. So and and he's not the ministry. He's my husband. That's, so he's not right. the church. He's my that's husband. Right. So he he is who I take care of first. That's now my wait. priority. We're gonna tag this all night long. <laughs> the church is it, this is the church and not heaven. Yeah. Well, you say you're you're my husband. What did you say it again? I missed it. Dang. My husband is my priority. He is he, is he is my church. He is my he is my my job is to take care of him. That's right. That's what God called me to do. Um, <laughs> that's what He calls me to. Do. That's right. <laughs> but but uh, certainly um, he is the focus, and I and I feel that I'm doing well with that. When the people tell me like he's doing better, he yeah, he's better that's right, he's better. He's this, and so I'm saying, okay, I'm doing my job, and and I, I I'm a firm believer that you can't do a whole lot of things really well 
Yeah. It should be focused on my focus. Right. If, I, if I can take care of him, and that's a whole lot of man. Yeah. In every aspect of the word. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, very tall. He has this presence. Uh, yes, he extremely does. Extremely smart. So yeah. he has, you know, really various needs and, you know, these conversations. Sometimes I'll say, why are you using so many big words? <laughs> <laughs> What's exegesis? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Tell me what these words mean. And he's also always gracious. And he does. Yeah. But so we have that, you know, fulfilling all of that. And then, of course, my personal work. My my uh, my son, my oldest, uh, is a is an edu educator too. He's kind of following in my footsteps, and um, all my children are. And so, you know, this is our life work. So, yeah, you know, between the two of those, there's not a whole lot of room for a lot. Else. Yeah. You said um, that you understood your ministry. Mm -hmm. That may be different for some women who come into the lane of being a leader's wife or pastor's wife, because maybe you met this journey uh, middle of life. Right. Uh, some, some people meet it as a young woman mm -hmm. and they're not quite sure. I wish someone had said, actually, somebody did say that to me. I can remember the first few years of our marriage. They were very difficult, very tumultuous years. And part of it was I didn't understand ministry. I didn't really know my place. And it was a, a an older lady who said to me, she sat me down. She said, baby, come, come, come here. Let me tell you something. Because, you know, I was always complaining about how long they at the church and, mm -hmm. and, and and I'd be complaining because I'm still sitting in the foyer waiting for you to finish a meeting. And it's five hours later. Church has been over for five hours. You know, I had all these grumblings and rumblings and complaints. And she said to me, she said, you know, if you would get about the Lord's work and use your gifts, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be upset about him using his. Mm -hmm. Now, look. Amen. That was the best thing that anybody had ever said to me. I, you know, I really had to say, what? Well, you, do what? You know, she was saying, listen, God gave you gifts too. go right. and do what God called you to do. And 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 then she added this and baby, drive your own car to church. <laughs> I absolutely do. Every Yeah, boy, I do. I, I have, you know, I don't need a parking spot. I'm coming in my car. <laughs> but, but it took me I mean, years, years. Yeah. So for someone who is entering this season um, new, like they're not they're not older, they quite hadn't figured out what God has really gifted them to do. I would say get with a mentor, get with someone, um, get, get with some other pastors, wives, and let's flesh out, let's figure out what it is that God has given you to add to His ministry, mm -hmm. Absolutely. not take away from His ministry. Right. And y'all know we could be talking about this for a long time because there are some times that things that we do as pastor's wives that distract or take away from the ministry that God has given our husbands. Right. I pray about that often. I, in fact, before we got married, I asked God to not let me ever interfere with his work. Yeah. Meaning God's work. Yeah. And, uh, and because I am who I am, I won't always know yeah. when God is at work with him. You know, That's right. You know, I mean, I mean, contrary to what most people believe, a pastor is a man. And That's so, right. And Come so, on. Wait, there it is again. Yeah, they're not just preaching all the time. You know? wait, but wait, there's our tag again. The, right. the pastor is a man. First. He, he is a man. First. He is a man first. No matter how many of your congregants will lift him to the level of saint, right. he ain't. And you know, I, I, I kept him in that place when I was a member. I, I always looked, I was like, you know, I didn't know him personally outside of Sunday. And um, so I didn't really care what he did outside. And I remember, you know, sometimes it would be sometimes when he was getting into it with the city of Houston. You know, he's that kind of guy. He's you know, always making sure everybody's taken care of. And I was like, I don't really care. Um, I'm just going to church on Sunday and I want to hear what he has to give me on Sunday. And so and I learned so much from him um, as a pastor, but I always knew the man, you know, I, I don't know. I, I want to say that came from my grandmother, that what I would yeah. say, you know, uh, they're men, they're not God, you know. Um, yeah. So I now always that is kept him in that. Uh, yeah, I always kept him in that and I still do. So, you know, even on Sunday when he's preaching, you know, I watch, I don't go to see, he doesn't talk about the sermon before with me. Mm -hmm. He might mm -hmm. ask me some questions, but I still don't really know until I get yeah. what is this. I find out what everybody else finds out. Mm -hmm. And um, and I take away from, just like I always do. So I, I see him in a different light when he's up there uh, preaching. And and most times if I'm having some issues or having something else to deal with, or if it's something going on with one of the kids, 
if he's working, I usually try to circumvent that until I feel like the work is over. And God is yeah. been really good and faithful with me in that. It's like I just feel this kind of feeling that comes over me and say, this is not a good time. Yeah. And now is the time. And, uh, and it's, it's work for us. So it really has now, that's happened. very important, though. I think some pastor's wives and leader's wives need to hear that just right there. If you don't take anything else from us tonight, ladies, right. that is very important to know. Two things I get out of that, what you just said, is it's things that I have learned through the years. And one is that, yes. He is a man, but God has called him to do this particular thing. When you begin to mix what God has called him to do and who he is in his humanness mm -hmm. and expect him to be holier than thou because of what God has called him to do, you're, in trouble. you're messing up. You're yeah. messing up right. because the same grace that we want as women, as humans, is the same grace that we have to give to our spouses. It doesn't matter where they serve in the church. Right. This is the same grace that you must give unto them. Right. My husband used to say to the congregation when we were at our first church, he was assistant pastor over there. And by the way, she's going to be on with us next week. Join us next week. Sister Mary Vonner from um, Bible Way Fellowship Baptist Church. First lady over there is going to be joining us. But when we were there, I remember my husband used to say all the time, you all see the pastor. She knows the man. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and and what I had to learn from that, and we're going to lead into bad as we start bringing this mm -hmm. to the end in a moment, is that one of the things I had to glean from that is what you just said. When he is standing behind that pulpit, he is on an assignment. I can't take what happened last night or three nights ago or this morning and then interject that into that space mm -hmm. because that's not the proper space for that. Right. God has called him to do that. Somebody needs that word. I need to deal with my issues at another time. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say that does require some learning of, um, for me, I say, it's it's what you look like during the sermon. Right. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, like, because if you sitting up that swole like this. Never. Right. <laughs> then I believe that the other ladies pick up on that. Oh, and, absolutely. And, and they make assumptions and it could be anything. It, it had, so you really have to make sure. And that for me is, is awesome. Uh, it was very easy because I've been an educator and I've been in school leadership for almost 20 yes. years. So with so that, I always had to come with that face on. If you know, man, that's you right. know that my husband, my son have an asthma attack the next day when I'm in Texas Children's Hospital. That's right. Still, you know, that's you know, it. Just to put on that, I always I tell my teachers or my mentees, it's like going on stage. Yes. So you can't, you can't, you can't let them see you because they they need your energy to be positive. That's right. Yeah. And I, I realize that. So I'm lucky that that rarely uh, that hasn't been as big a problem for me as it is probably for so many people because I'm so used to doing it. Um, oh yeah. And yeah. I, have, I have a great like my daughter-in-law. I say my daughter-in-law is so much of a Christian woman. She, I if I call her right now, she'd be quoting scriptures. Oh my gosh, she's just amazing. And um, loves the Lord and 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 really follows his lead. And if I start feeling some kind of way, I can pick up the phone and I have that yeah. support. And she's my daughter. You yeah. know, I have another daughter, kind of adopted daughter that I call. And she's always extremely supportive, too. And they're grown women. Of course. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if, if I need to be reminded of who God is and how strong he is, I'll call Tierra in a minute and I'll say, you yeah. know, I'll just tell her what's going on and she'll just throw it at me. And I was like, okay, I needed that reminder. Okay. Like, Bring me back yeah. down. This is, you know, or um, so yeah, it is, it is, it is a blessing. You know, I, I'm blessed to have people like that in my inner circle that yeah. really helped me a lot, you know, just to keep myself if I feel like I might go into a place feeling some yeah. way. And they're like, okay, let's pray together. And I'm, you know, sometimes you forget to pray. You know, it, it doesn't matter whose wife you are. When yes. you get caught up in a spirit. You need those people around you. And I'm blessed to have those people to help me kind of stay focused. Get together. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Now, I will say this. <laughs> it's the best of me sometimes. Right here. I, you are not alone. It's, it's right here. But uh, I think what I hear you saying is, is surround yourself with inner circle people that can help you. Now, listen, I think, ladies, um, some say your inner circle may not be the people in your church. 
you know, it may not be. Those ladies may not be able to handle what you have going on with your husband or, you know, a, a, a small disagreement that they can blow up into a major, you know, that might not be where you find your inner circle. It might, it might not be. Right, right, you right, may right. have to reach out to other pastor's wives and, and right, get right. someone else who can walk you on this journey. Somebody who at least understands mm -hmm. um, what you're dealing with and how, because here's what I'm trying to say. The potential to cause somebody to stumble over how you're feeling in the moment is great yes, because yes. you may be feeling like that right now in this moment, but tomorrow you may not, mm -hmm. you know, you may be walking in all your fleshly feelings and then repent. And then they're still going to hold him to what you said. Right. So I would be careful of that. But what I do think we take away from that is make sure you do have it. You do need to have an inner circle, someone you can talk to, mm -hmm. someone who can encourage you and rebuke you. And you know, for me, like I said, with one of them, with Tasha specifically, she's known me well before I was a pastor's wife, and she's a young woman. So you know, she she's gonna listen and she's there to support me. She just loves me for who I am. You know, the same thing. Like my, my my daughter in love is just she she don't love me regardless. You know, and she was to me long before I was a pastor's wife. Um, that's you know, she's young enough to be my daughter, but that's just who she is, and it's just great right. that kind of support because it's just unconditional. And that's I know right. that it has nothing to do with anything other than they just love me, you know. So um, I think that that's really important. I always tell women, you should have one of them. Somebody, you pull it up, somebody's pulling you up, you know. That's right. And, um, and I'm blessed to have that. And, and fortunately for me, I do have that in the church. I do have women in the church that I feel like I can turn to if I really need anything. Or sometimes they just reach out to me. And I know it's the spirit because it's yeah. when I hear it. Um, yeah. Oh, Sister Whitaker. Oh my God. Sandra yeah. Whitaker will call me out of nowhere. Yeah. I was like, How did you know? Yeah. I was having a problem. And she's like, I just know. And I, was, I believe. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm really, I've really been blessed in this. And I thank God as often as I can remember. And uh, and I try to be that for other women. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Now, ladies, uh, I just want to remind you that we are talking to Sister Tori Cofield from Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church. And we're talking about my pastors, my husband. How does that work? Mm -hmm. So we just we titled it the good, the bad and the ugly. But it's really not really bad. It's just challenges that come with it. Mm -hmm. Opportunities for um, sanctification. You know, mm -hmm. it's just ways to grow. God allows certain things to happen in the church so that we might grow up as women who happen to be married to our pastor. That's right. So, so let's talk a little bit. When, it, when you think of challenges, what challenges do you think ladies who are married to their pastor might face? I think just the wrong expectations. I mm. think that, that because I, I don't think there's low expectation, high. It's not, it's just wrong. I think yeah. um, when a person tells you who you are, who they are, you should believe it. Like if I say, hey, my priority is my husband and my work, then that's, that's who I am. So there shouldn't be any other expectations in my mind. So um, I think one of the biggest things is because they think that because I'm a pastor's wife, that I'm, you know, I've gone to Egypt and they're like looking at me like, where's your hat? I'm not wearing a hat. This is like, I'm not wearing a hat right now. I would wear one. I'm not wearing one now. Every time I'm going to tell you what we're wearing. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, and that's fine. You know, it, this this expectation that is, I'm going to be that person. And I'm, I'm just not, you know, genuinely. I mean, gen, gen, genuinely, I'm not. Um, just the wrong expectation. Of, you know, like, like I said, when I first got here, I had women. When I first got married, I had women. Who assumed I was taking over certain ministries? So I wanted to because I was an elder. I was going to take over the children's ministry, and I'm like, like that's insane. I'm like, I'm yeah, the best. And when I'm at church, I need to kind of get away from my work. Yeah, five days a week sometimes. So when I'm here, I kind of need the work. You know, I'm not here to work, and um, but I will assist in the way that I can. So I think that was a surprise that I didn't. Do that. I think with anyone who's coming into ministry, I don't think it's right for you to assume because you married a pastor that you should take over or could. Or why would you do that? Unless there was a need, of course. Um, and I've heard those stories about women that have done that, and, um, and that's pretty much me. That's unfortunate. Uh, yeah. You know, I, when I go into a new school as a principal, I don't change things out the gate. Yeah, I, I watch and see what's going on and what needs to be changed. So some things are working. So yeah. uh, and me being a member here, 
these things were always happening. So my, my job is to kind of accentuate whatever is happening. That's um, right. But that was not so comfortable. I, you know, they wanted me, everybody kept saying, why don't you sit with him? I said, well, first of all, I can't see over there. <laughs> I don't like sitting. I want to sit where I want to sit. Yeah. Is there a rule that I have to sit over there? You know, and so that, little questions like that. So no, I just kind of yeah. be myself. I always, I wrote this blog about pastors' wives, and I said we have to be aware of the expectations of others, the expectations of ourselves, mm -hmm. and the expectation of our pastor husband, because all of that sometimes can collide. And right. then a, a, a pastor's wife or a leader's wife can find her saying herself saying, I feel like I'm losing myself. I feel like I don't know who I am. I feel like I'm drowning in his shadow. You know, all of that, I think, can be driven by different expectations. Listen, if you pay, play the piano, then play the piano. If you right. don't play the piano, then don't play the piano. You know, I mean, if you if you are a hat and a heel girl, then all right. But if you're right. not, then you're just right. not. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, but, but the pressure, the yes, pressure yes. from people, I said, there's a book called, um, what is it? It's about the fear of man. Um, oh, somebody will remember it and put it up for me. But it, it, when we, when we get caught up in the fear of man, worrying about what somebody's going to think of us, oh, what are they going to say if I don't go to this meeting? What are they going to say if I don't show up with him to this? Well, they might say you didn't feel good. They might say your two-year-old two, two year old had a fever. They might say, or they may say some real awful, ugly things. But guess what? You need to take care of you and your family and do what God calls you to do. And maybe you'll make it to the next meeting. Maybe you won't. But beware of your expectations for yourself the expectations of others, and then just be uh, prized of what your husband expects of you. Right, that's that's the focus. And so, I, as long as I'm meeting his expectations, um, I'm I'm good. You know, I, I, like I said, I do have a couple of go tos that I talk to about things that I just don't know anything about. You know, yeah, because it is there is some work in being a first lady. There is some things that I am required to do. Yes, and I will reach out and find out. You know exactly, making sure that I'm doing what I should do. Um, yeah, and that's 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 okay for me. Like I, I'm okay with that. But um, trying to push me for something just because I'm the first lady, uh, I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's yeah. fair to the people that are doing the work. Um, like exactly, the church has been around for many many years, and the people that are here that are doing the work. And fortunately for me, being a member before, you know, I could see the work and being actually work in the church. So I knew everybody. And, and, and the great thing for me was, it was everybody knew me, and yeah. knew me and how I worked. So we all work really well together. And, you know, so it, it, it's it been a blessing. The journey has been a blessing. And it wasn't uh, by design. It just kind of happened that way. But it, it's, it's, been, it's been a blessing. That's good. Well, ladies, that's, that's, the, that's the hardest part. Um, yeah. And that when you go into the bad, you talk about, I, I really um, miss being being in places and everybody acting like they used to act before I was married to a pastor. Oh, my yeah. God. I, miss, I was at my, my sister's wedding um, just during COVID, and I was at her wedding, and there was a gentleman at the wedding who wanted to take a shot just a shot of liquor. And uh, he was like, Tori, move over, um, stand right there. And I said, why, why do I need to move? He said, I don't want the pastor to see me taking a shot. And right before then, Cofield said to me, Tori, we should leave so everybody can have fun. And I was like, no, we don't have to leave because it's just about 20 of us here and his family. He said, no, they need to have fun. And then when, 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 when my friend did that and he said, I said, okay, I guess we should leave. Cause they, you know, and I knew, that they would have more fun if we weren't there. And it's really unfortunate because the last thing my husband is is judgmental. Yeah. He he totally is not. I mean, I don't know how he does it, but he is not. But um, most people are really, they, they hold them in this place and they can't have fun. Having to leave early sometimes, I'm like, that's it. This is so, uh, 
no, I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to do it, but I don't know. That's yeah, there are some places that, you know, things are different because right. you do walk in that place. You do right. hold that role, that place of honor to many. Ladies, as we wrap up, if you have any questions that you want us to answer or discuss real quick, drop them in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that this can get out to many other different women. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as we hang up, if you subscribe tonight, that would be much appreciated. Um, now, just let's just visit the ugly just for a little bitty bit, just a little bit. Because I know, I know, I know that there are many women. I've counseled a lot of pastor's wives who have said they're either considering suicide because it's been just too much mm -hmm. or they're on their way to divorce court or they're committing adultery because they're they're just fleeing their situation and they're just trying to mm -hmm. soothe their soul with might i add all the wrong things you know right. or they're doing you know alcohol or drugs or food for that matter they're just fleeing in all these different ways let's just encourage their hearts just a little bit mm -hmm. when you think about the ugly side of this what do you think of mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. ugly. Um, I try to turn away from the ugly, but I think uh, just cruel people who are out, yep. unhappy people mm -hmm. who are trying to make you unhappy because they're yep. unhappy. Um, there are women, mm -hmm. I know, particularly women who had their eyes probably set mm -hmm. on, on Dr. Okay. D.Z. Cofield. He's single for a very long time. Um, and uh, I do know that, you know, I've heard about some of the stories and you know, some things get back to me about what women say. It's unfortunate. And I, I feel like they come from a hurt place, you know, as, uh, you know, they say hurt people hurt people. So I think yes. the ugliest part is those people who just, you know, don't want to accept what's really happening and uh, are just looking to hurt them because they're hurting. Yeah. And it, you know, unfortunately for me and the work that I do, I'm kind of used to you know, dealing with people that are going through grief of some type and, and hurt, hurting, hurting. And so I, I don't take everything personal. I have a, yeah. a little bit of a tough skin uh, around that kind of thing because I usually can't be about people because you don't know. Them. Yeah. You know I mean, so, um, but it, it, is, it is sad for me. And, um, and, I, and I don't like having to be cautious about it, but I do. I have to be yeah. mindful. And I have to make sure that I I'm work, uh, watch the spirits that I subject myself to um, mm -hmm. more than I did before. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I guess the devil gets a little bit more busier when you, mm -hmm. you get in a role like this. So I'm always cautious and careful about it. But that's that's the ugliest part. It's, I've had people uh, just as recent as last couple of weeks ago, uh, somebody made a comment to me about my husband's first wife. And... Uh, and they were really surprised at my response. Hmm. Like she, she, she helped him heal what we're sitting in, and Amen. we were for her for that forever. forever. That's right. Um, she has three beautiful children that she is right. to share with her, with her, with her my husband, and um, a new grandbaby too. I just love it. Um, and we all share. And I think. I mean, but at the end of the day, you know, the work that she did in here, just supporting him. Because this is an amazing place. Like, That's right. In a very short time. Mm -hmm. um, so she has to be honest in that. And, That's uh, right. That for my, my heart, you know, and I, the person that said it to me was not looking for that answer and was definitely not, could didn't have a comeback. Yeah. Uh, and I knew it meant it for ugly. You know, and, well, yeah. so, and so that's the yeah. ugly, you know, like the ugly when the, when those things happen and you have to put your guard up and you have to kind of put them in their place and you in a in a way that's that's pleasing to God. Yeah. Um, sometimes the flesh, you know, because of, I can think of some things that Tori in 1990 would have said. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> to that young lady, but she, thank God for God and. That's right. And thank God for Bridget Thomas who helped me discover what the Book of James says about your tongue. Um, and and then she taught me well um, because I watch my tongue and I would I, I I I use it much better than I did back in those days. Thank God. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm glad that you said that. The uh, the ugly can be ugly. Right. My husband and I have been in ministry almost 30 years uh, together and apart, and. 
I have seen I have seen some things. I can tell you, we could be here all night. Um, but what I do know is that what I have learned through the years is that we don't quarrel against flesh and blood. So if I had to encourage a lady tonight that may be walking through a hot season of the attacks, the slander, the gossip, the backbiting, the uh, the whispering in your ear, but yet talking behind your back, all that, I would say, just remember this, Satan comes to steal, kill and destroy. Mm -hmm. And you do not quarrel against flesh and blood. Now, I didn't say you don't rebuke flesh and blood. <laughs> let's let's not get it confused. That's right. a whole different thing. Right. But understand that your, your battle is not with these particular ladies that may be doing whatever they're doing around you, to you, whatever. Your battle is already won in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So if, if I just had to encourage someone that's trying to give up or wanting to give up, I would say, um, you know, take it to the Lord, find somebody to help you. And yes, there are going to be seasons of attack. Mm -hmm. I, I, I try to warn people, uh, ladies that are going into ministry with pastor's wives or leader's wives, deacon's wives, whatever it is that, listen, they will go through your children to get to your husband. Yep. Okay. They they will go through you. Don't be a message carrier. I had to figure that out early. Yeah. Oh, you telling me that because you want me to tell my husband. No, ma'am, Pam, that ain't working. We ain't doing that. If you want him to know, you're going to have to tell him. And you're not brave enough to do that. So going on with that. <laughs> so, yeah, that you know, it happens. But you have to, I would say you got to grow yourself up. Mm -hmm. You got to mature. You got to stand firm. Right. Flat footed and firm mm -hmm. in faith and know when you're being used right. by the devil, not by the lady, by the devil. Mm -hmm. Not only that, uh, somebody said to me once, they said, Satan, go to church every Sunday. <laughs> you know, because I, I there have been ladies who come to church and their aim and their purpose is uh, in their mind. Hey, my husband is supposed to be their husband. Right. Satan so they come to church at Good Hope every day. Like and all day, every day. All I mean, day, every day. When he shows up, we like, okay, no. Uh -huh. I see you. So, and I think I that you. what you said is real. Mm -hmm. Try the spirit by the spirit. You have to recognize what you're dealing with. And some women are just so hurt. Mm -hmm. And I remember there's a young lady, and we're going to be closing, ladies. There's a young lady that I had to talk to and tell her, baby, listen, let me work with you through your struggles. And I counseled her through what she was going through. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, I had to explain to her, okay, so let's, before you go, I just want to tell you this, that one right there, he's already married. So <laughs> let us not have to have this conversation That's again. Good. All right. <laughs> I've had to have that conversation too. Yes. Yes. But you know what? I thank God that I didn't take it personal. Right. Right. I had to love her enough to tell her the truth to help her. Right. Without getting all offended that it was about me. Right. And they missed something. Was my husband was just like shh, over his. I was, I was like, you oh, yeah. see that? And he's like, see what? No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because they're on assignment, and right. I can appreciate that now. Right. We will, if the Lord wills, we'll be married twenty four years in December. Now I can say I fully appreciate that he's on assignment. Right. In the first five years, I think I was in my flesh when I would say, "What do you mean you ain't see that woman?" <laughs> She I can't mean, see her right down front with her short, her itty bitty skirt on. What you mean you didn't right, see her? And crossed her legs. Come on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, you, you had to have seen it. So, so you yeah. had to have seen it. Yeah. Well, ladies, we are going to wrap up. But Sister Cofield, before we go, would you just tell these ladies, what has Jesus meant to you? Like, how has he helped you just overall? Um, Jesus is, is, is my rock. I... I I didn't find Jesus when I married a pastor. Okay. Um, I, I've known him for a long time. It took me a minute to realize that's, that's who it was that was holding me up. But uh, I've been through a lot in my life. And I thank God for everything that I've gone through because it helps me be better for others. Yeah. But there were times when I didn't know how I was going to get through it or, you know, why I was going through it. And he always gave me that comfort. Um, Jesus is there for me when I don't even know what I need. Mm. Um, and, and oftentimes I have to apologize and say I forgot to, to thank you because I, yeah. I didn't realize he was there doing his thing. So um, for me, it's a constant companionship. Um, it's not my husband's job to make me happy. Come on, to to be the Jesus in me. You know, I have to bring that you know with me. It's a blessing to be with somebody who has the same beliefs and 
loves the same Jesus that I do. But for me, it has been a constant companion. My reason for still sitting here, you know, my personal story is, is interesting. And I often ask, like, why? And then he always gives me that comfort answer. And so, and when I do need to be reminded, like I said, I have those kind of people in my ear that are reminding me, you know, uh, remember who you belong to, who, who you are. And, yes. and I, I, God has been good to me. I, I you know, I, it sounds so cliche ish, but it is. I, I mean, and because he loves me, yeah, like, like I have, I mean, I mean like he's like me, are you serious? <laughs> you know, and I know that he does. It, I feel it every day. I look at my grandchildren, I look at my life and where I came from and where I am, and it's nothing that I do. You know, I, I work hard, but I, 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 one day I'm gonna write a book called Anomaly. Mm -hmm. that, that book is coming to, because I am that. It's all but God. It might be called mm -hmm. God because that's what you know. But mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's everything. It really is. And um, and I'm blessed, like I said, to have known him before I married. Mm -hmm. The Reverend Lizzie Cofield. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I'm glad that he, like I said, he loves him as much as I do. He knows how to remind me about him when I can't remind myself. So it's a beautiful uh, uh it's a beautiful relationship, yeah, the three of us. That's right. Now that is important. And ladies, we leave you with that, that if you are turning to your husband to fill all the holes, the voids, the everything in your life, whether he's your pastor or not, it will never work. Jesus must be first. He must be first. He must really, truly be your all in all. I really like to say, if you don't know him, taste and see my sister, you're going to find that he is mm, mm, good. <laughs> he is. He won't really, really is. Yeah. He won't let you down. He won't yeah. fail you. He's not a man that he should ever lie. He is everything. And if you have not put your faith and confidence in him, I encourage you tonight, soon as we say amen, that you just fall flat on your face and ask the Lord God to come into your life and save you, mm. and deliver you from all of the things that don't please his father, God. Right. And I and I guarantee you, your life will never be the same. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I promise you it will never be the same. And for all my sisters out there, all my pastors, wives, friends. Hey, listen, stay in there, stick in there, stick with it. Remember that your pastor is your husband, but he's a man first. And remember that. You know, the church, as Sister Cofield said, we got all her tags going. This is church. It is not heaven. Don't mm -hmm. go to that church house expecting people not to do you some harm. <laughs> You're going to be tempted to do some harm and they are going to be tempted to do some harm to you. We all just need to walk by the spirit and not fulfill the desires of our flesh. And mm -hmm. lastly, I want to say, uh, please. Be kind to your pastor husband. We didn't get a chance to fully cover that, but oh, we're going to talk about some of that next week. But listen. Just because he is the pastor does not mean that he is God. You shouldn't have the expectation that he's never going to fail. As a matter of fact, I would encourage you to give him room to fail because guess what? If you can't be the one that he fails around because he can't go into the church house and fully be himself. If he can't come home and be who he is, now I'm not talking about sin and y'all know I'm not talking about all that, but I'm saying if you don't give him that space, where's he gonna find it? Right. Be a remember, friend. If, if you need a, a women support from women, you can always, always come to Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church because we have the best women on the planet in this building. I love them all. And uh, you're more than welcome. To, you're invited to join us uh, at yes. Good Hope uh, MBC on Facebook, Instagram. Yes. Um, we're on YouTube as well right now during uh, COVID. Yeah. Um, and we welcome you with open arms uh, anytime you want to visit. Uh, it'll be Sunday right there. Yeah, so let's plug that real quick. So Good Hope, the service broadcasts on Sundays at what time? 8, 10, and 12. 8, 10, and 12 on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And I think we're putting it up in the comments. And if you are uh, interested in our church, it is Community of Faith Bible Church. We meet at 10 a.m. on Zoom. You can go to cofbc.org and you will find the link there. We do have a live broadcast on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We are also doing Sunday school via Zoom at this time. But now listen. These are great churches. Take your pick, but do this. Remember, do not forsake the assembling of the saints. You must get into a local body. You need that. And 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 my pastor's wise friends, let me say this as we close. I mean, it's just too much to talk about, but let me say this. Go to your church. <laughs>
<laughs> so I have seen too many pastors' wives. You sitting up in these other churches, letting your husband fuel the fire in your church. Go home, ma'am. Go yeah. home. Yeah. Thank y'all for joining me. Thank you, Sister Cofield. You're more than welcome. Thank you for having me. Do you have any closing words? No, but thank you for what you're doing. I think it's amazing. And uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Like I said, uh, I'll be watching and uh, thank you. get more information and get more support. But uh, I love your husband, love your pastor. Yes, yes, love yes. Love I do too. I really do. And thank y'all and ladies. Would you subscribe? I really want to get this out to, to people. So if you if you think about it tonight, as soon as we say amen, which is going to be in two seconds, please hit that subscribe bell, uh, button and you can hit the bell for notifications. We go live on um, every Thursday night at 7 p.m. And join us next week, next week, next week. Sister Mary Vonner from Bible Way Missionary Fellowship Church. All right. We're out. Love y'all. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you.